recording office hours. We're talking about Hindley Milner type inference, and specifically in the case here, where we have two apply statements, and we have the same function on the left e, and has some parameter on the right here. So let's just say, let's give these abstract names we've never seen before. This is C, and this is D, right? So we know from each, we know, let's say, not even looking at this one, looking at this apply statement, we know E has the type uh, where it's a function, so it's definitely a function, right? And it uh, takes in some type, uh, so it takes in some one parameter, so it takes in a type of C, and it returns, let's just say this is T1, whatever that type of that apply statement is. So it takes in a TC and returns a T1. Then we go over here to this apply statement, right? We see the same thing. So we see, okay, so first thing, right? So the constraints all so the constraints are always valid, have to always be satisfied. So this is always going to happen. This is going to be an equality that holds throughout the entire tree, or else we have a type error. For instance, so if we had something else, like let's say uh, we had something else over here, that was a bracket operator, and that had something F and E. So we're applying the bracket operator on the um, array on the F, which would mean F would have to be an array, but what was E right here? It should be an integer. Yeah, it has to be an integer to be used here, right? So that's the constraint here. So the question is, is an integer a function that takes in, a function that takes in the type TC and returns a type T1? It just means T1 has to be an integer as well, right? Can, can, would that work if like for E? If e was a function that returns an integer, if, if what? That, if e was a function that returns an integer, does it satisfy? Do you mean that? Uh, e. Oh, e. Yeah. E is a function that takes in a type T C and returns a type T one. Well, yeah, like you said, T one should be a function. But does that does that work, or does it have? Can it not be a function? Does it have? So what's the constraint here? So let's just put arbitrary types here. So we have type, um, let's say T one, uh, T two, and T three. Right, arbitrary types, not even looking. The only node we're looking at is this node here. Right, so what do we know about the types just looking at this statement? So I'm going to erase these. Well, you don't know T1 type yet. I don't know. I don't know any of their types, but I know, I know something. This node, to, the constraints about this node and the semantics here mm -hmm. and the types tell me something about how these types are all related. T2 is an array. T2 is an array. Of type T1. An array of T1. Yep. Right? And T3 is an integer. Yep. And these have to hold, right? If the type of T3 is not an integer, this doesn't type check. So just to double check, T3 cannot be a function that returns an integer. So let's get in, in a second. So, OK. <clears throat> so then we look at what it is, right? Uh, so what do I have? F and E here, right? And so now I have the constraint. So when I look at each of these nodes, I say, oh, I have the constraint T3 is equal to the type of E. And uh, let's see, T2 is equal to the type of F. Right? These constraints hold everywhere. Um, so if earlier I had said the type of E is something that is a function that takes in. So let's, let's, uh, let's think about it like this. Let's get rid of functions. Let's say earlier we said we we have the um, constraint that T E is an array, the type of E is an array of ints. So the question is, with this, T E is an array of ints. Can T E be equal to an integer? Are those types the same? No. No, it doesn't make sense, right? One is an array of integers. Yeah, the other one's just an, an single integer, right? Those are completely different types, right? So therefore, that would not type check. Eric, does that do anything? If it uh, I think it's still working. I guess I can ruin the, the flow of everything in test, but yeah, it's still going, allegedly. OK. So so yeah, so this is kind of comes down to, remember when we talked about uh, like structural equality of types? Right, so like it's really easy to do. Is an integer a boolean? No, no, definitely not. 
Is an integer an array no. of integers? No. No. Can't be, right? It doesn't make sense. You can't use an integer when you have an array because the whole point is an array is multiple type, uh, multiple elements all of the same type, and you use the array, uh, array index operator to select one of them. So you can think of the this operator gets rid of this part as opposed to the types, right? Okay, so then we have kind of the question. So let's say we have a function that takes in type t1, uh, returns some type t2, and we want to say, well, is that equal to a function that takes in type t1, comma t2, and returns a t3? So what does this mean? That is the function that it's a function. How many parameters does the function have? One, t1. And what is it type does it return? Okay, this function, what does this oh, mean? Oh, it has two parameters and returns t3. Yeah, this function returns two parameters, takes in two parameters, one of type t1, one of type t2, and returns a, a parameter of type t, uh, returns something of type t3. So, are these equal? No. No, you can't, any place, so the thing about it, is it equal, is any place you could use this, could you use this instead? Well, actually, okay. So that's a good question. <laughs> uh, no, so definitely. It doesn't matter. That definitely not. Yeah. Be, T two and T three were the same. Uh, were to be the same. It doesn't matter. Right. right because um, this function takes two parameters and this one takes one. So you definitely can never use those in different instances. Right. It doesn't make sense. Uh, so this is definitely not equal. Um, right. So then, so if we go back to your question here where if t3, we see that instead of it being an array of ints, so, um, well, based on what you said, it, it can't look a function and an integer, but they're not the same. Exactly, yeah. So if I have an integer, and I say, well, is it the same thing as something that takes in t1 and returns an integer, a function that takes in t1 and returns an integer? No, you can't use a function in place of an integer, right? It doesn't make sense. You'd have to call this function in order to get the return type, right? That's how you'd use that, is you'd use the apply operator, pass in something of type t1, and you'd get an integer that you could then use. Uh, but just using that function oh. by itself, bam, that definitely doesn't type check. So even though the return type of that function is integer, you can't say it's equal to integer because right. you still have to operate on that function. Exactly, that yeah, function... Exactly, they're not structurally equivalent, right? So on one side you have a base type of an int, and on the right side you have a function that takes in t1, returns an integer. Uh, kind of some other wrinkles here is let's say we have like t1 returns type t2, and then we have, I don't know, t3 returns type t4, right? So we have this constraint. So, uh, so what does this mean? It could be. It could be, yeah, exactly. But this gives us additional constraints, right? So we know they're both functions, and we know they both have the same types, right? So this means that in order for this equality to hold, what does t1 have to equal? t3. t3, and what does t2 have to equal? t4. Yeah, exactly. Just like if you uh, get in a situation where you have, let's say, an array of uh, type t5, and you have the constraint that that's equal to an array of booleans, since that's our favorite word. <laughs> right? So is this equal? Uh, well, I'm Maybe. If T5 is boolean. Maybe, but it also gives us another constraint, right? Because we know, okay, structurally, on the outside, they're the same. They're both arrays, so that matches. So they definitely don't, uh, it's not, not equal right away. But then I have the additional constraint that T5 is a boolean. And that constraint must hold. So for this to hold, that means this holds. And that's got to hold everywhere throughout the program. So if you ever see T5 not be a Boolean, then that's a problem. Checking, uh, would T5 equal to Boolean have to be, I guess if you're doing like bottom or top down, does T5 equal Boolean have to be on top? Or be it doesn't top matter, top honestly. Um, yeah, I mean, I like to just do it top down because that's more natural to me. Um, but that's like the nice, really nice thing about this is you can do it in any order, and as you're going through, as long as you apply these constraints, just like we did here, right? As t3 is an integer, 
and T2 is an array of type T1. As long as you do that everywhere, it'll work out the same. So in a homework problem, if it asks for the type of a function, but the parse tree doesn't type check, get we type error. Type error. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. That should be enough. I hope so. <laughs> that sounds good. Okay. Um, anybody have any other homework three questions? Right, so it's just basically just like so. Um, it's got to be have the same type everywhere. So if it's um, so, for instance, like uh, here, here's a, actually a really good example. Um, I like I like this example because it's not similar to the homework. Uh, okay. Scoot in a little bit. I am recording, by the way. Just. Okay. So here we have function application. We're applying e. Uh, we have e as a function that's being called. So this would be some somewhere we have e c like this, and then this here we have something like f bracket e. Yeah. Right. And the dot dot dots here. I mean, it doesn't matter where this other piece is. It could be anywhere, right? Um, doesn't matter. So when we see, so let's give each, of, let's give this a type T1. And so when we look at this apply, this apply has constraints, right? Function calls have constraints. So what, uh, what do we know about the types? Let's say T E T C, and T1 here. Uh, return an integer? Why? Just at this. There's, I'm not looking at anything there. Uh, then I can't really see any constraints. Um, well, what does E have to be in order to for this to work? Function. Yeah, it's got to be a function. And um, how many parameters does that function have? One. One. What's the type of that parameter? TC. Boom. Exactly. We have TC. And then what does that function return? Something. Something, but... We've given it a name here, right? Uh, T1. Yeah, so whatever, because this node is going to have some type. And it, the type, so if I said uh, x is equal to e bracket c, right? Or e, uh, calling function e, passing a parameter c, assign that to uh, parameter x. So whatever the type of this is, right, if we're using this to check or whatever, if this is in an if statement, right? So we have the constraint that e better be a function that takes in one parameter whose type is TC, and that returns something of type T1. Okay. That's what we know. So we know, right here, E has got to be a function. It's got to be a function that takes in one type C, uh, takes in one parameter that's type is TC, and that returns some other type T1. Now when we get to this, so let's give this a name T2, uh, just this node, and then we have TF and TE, so we have T2, T F T E. Okay, so looking at this node, what constraints do we have here? That E needs to be uh, integer. Mm -hmm. And what about T F? F is an array of integers. Uh, why integers? Uh, it's just an array of something. Of what? Of T two. Yeah, because that's what we're going to return here. So the same thing, right? This is going to return something, right? Because when you access when you access an array element, right, you want to you're essentially uh, peeling off this array of layer and returning one of those elements. And so if you have an array of booleans, when you index into one, you're going to return a boolean, right? But we don't have any constraints on what that type is. We don't know. These may be defined. T two may be uh, have a constraint somewhere else. Okay. So now the question is. We have this. So can an integer ever be a function? No. No. So you 
If we have a similar situation on the homework, do we just write like error or? Well, what kind of error is it? Conflicting type error? Yeah, <laughs> a type check error, exactly. So yeah, you have a type error. So you say, you say here, well, you could explain a little bit. You say here, E is being used as an integer. So we have the constraint that E has to be an integer. But here, E is being used as a function. Therefore, there's no possible way that these things type check. This, this program does not type check. It doesn't matter whatever else happens in any of this tree. If we get one case like that, we say, boom, type error. Oh. Yeah, can't possibly be valid. Sounds overthinking. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Let's have project questions. Yes. Okay. Do I go first, or uh, I think I'm gonna stop the recording now and then.